Is the developer job market saturated? Is it even worth learning to code now? Will I be replaced by AI anyway? I think these kinds of questions are on a lot of developers' minds at the moment, especially junior developers if you're trying to break into the industry, and especially if you spend a lot of time on YouTube or Reddit. So in today's video, I want to talk about these issues and my opinions on them from my perspective and look at why it might look like the job market is a bit saturated at the moment with too many junior developers and look at why it might look like it's shrinking with all the layoffs and then AI coming in and then at the end talk about what we can actually do about it and is it even worth still trying to be a developer in this day and age. There's absolutely no doubt about it at the moment. There are so many people wanting to become developers and I put myself in that bracket of course. I think a lot of it is because Covid made us all rethink what we wanted to do with our careers and our lives and there was just this positivity around tech and this real enthusiasm and people perhaps started to see it as this almost future-proof industry to be working in and then all the layoffs more recently I think have come as quite a shock to some people and the industry doesn't seem to be as easy to break into as they were perhaps told online. I think so many of us also want a work from home job these days and there's nothing better than a job that you can do purely from your laptop. I think a lot of us want to work remotely as well and I think that's a big part of it. It's really interesting to me to look at my own circle of friends, you know, close friends. I've got so many people who are at the very least interested in coding and development. I've got friends though who've done it for a lot longer than I have and then I've got friends who have shown the first signs of interest and asked me questions and perhaps not done too much about it and everything in between really. I think I mention this because it's worth remembering that just because everyone's talking about it doesn't mean that everyone's doing something about it. I mean some are but some aren't and some even though they might be doing it they might not be the best at it. So I think the thread and the theme of this video is really to still make yourself the best developer you can be. But that can feel difficult when the job market does feel saturated and that is how it feels at the moment. A lot of people say that the job market is flooded, especially with people who don't have the proper qualifications. And I can see why people who have computer science degrees or even bootcamp qualifications would say that. Now, I have neither, and you'll know that if you've been following this channel, and I still manage to land a job, so obviously it is still possible. I think it depends on the job a lot of the time. Some companies do want people who have these formal qualifications, and some just don't care. And I think all of them know that just because you have a degree doesn't make you better than a self-taught person. At the end of the day, it comes down to the competence of that individual, and their approach and their enthusiasm and their skills. I think one thing that I'm learning and one thing that's worth remembering about junior jobs especially is that just because we don't see a lot of them online doesn't mean they don't exist. It seems that in the more early career jobs a lot of them aren't always advertised and the candidates are found through things like referrals or private connections or networking. Now this isn't an area that I can speak on with any authority because I've not got a job this way and I've not put a huge amount of effort into it. I've got jobs through recruiters and through just cold applying online but it is something worth mentioning because I do hear it crop up over and over again especially from the more influencer type people online. I know you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt but yeah, it does seem to be worth networking if you want to give yourself the best chance and maybe you are opening yourself up to kind of a level of jobs that just aren't available to the people who aren't doing that. Worth bearing in mind. But yeah, one positive change in the job market in recent years, it is easier to land a job in the sense that now things are a bit more specialised, whereas in the past, yeah, you might have needed a CS degree. I think these days you can kind of just pick one stack or one framework or even just one language and hone in on that and then you can get a job quite easily if you know it well and, and that's pretty much what I did. 
As I always say, I chose .NET and C Sharp because I saw in my local area that a lot of companies were hiring for those types of positions and it really didn't take me long, about a month, to land a job with a local company learning C Sharp. This was with a small firm. I think there were only nine people working there, maybe even eight, eight or nine when I was there. I actually don't want to work for a big company at the moment. And I think a big part of that is what I see with layoffs. There just seems to be less stability and people getting hired and fired. Maybe one day I'll want to work for a bigger company, but not right now. But I do keep track of what's happening, obviously. And if you've been keeping tabs on things, you'll know that starting last year, there was a big round of layoffs that happened, especially with the big tech companies, the big fang companies in the US, in the UK and Europe as well. It's still happening now. I had a friend who works in the games industry and she was posting about all the layoffs there. To be honest, it's happening even outside of kind of the tech industry. I've got a friend who works for UPS and a lot of his colleagues have been made redundant and he's concerned about his job at the moment, but it does seem to be especially pronounced in the tech industry. I think one of the main reasons for this is that there was a lot of hiring during the pandemic times and maybe that's because companies had extra revenue to spend, maybe that's because the world was relying more on technology to keep us all connected at that point. I think what's happening now is actually a correction from the overhiring of the pandemic times and it's not necessarily that people are getting cut for no reason it's more that the market is readjusting after a period of overhiring there perhaps the people who were hired during the pandemic all that hasn't necessarily translated into increased revenue and so they're going to get cut and then if you listen to some influences and things like that and take the more kind of cynical view a lot of people will say this is just built in to companies business operations at this point and you know there are things like employee farming where supposedly companies will just hire people to make themselves look like a profitable successful company and then that translates to stock market value and yeah, just more interest in your company. And I can believe that as well. I don't really know the solution to this because some people say, you know, if you're a great employee, then you're gonna stand less chance of getting the sack. And then other people say, well, it, that doesn't matter because right now there are just whole departments getting cut and it doesn't depend on the competence of the employees within those departments. For now, I think my solution to this, as I've said, is to work for smaller companies at least while i'm building up my skills in the first place in the uk there aren't as many big tech companies as in the us they do exist but they're not quite as prevalent and for me i just don't have an interest right now if you do that's admirable i'm sure it would look great on your cv and i hope you'd learn a lot there i think it is tough um, at the moment to be breaking into those companies especially as a junior developer and then of course we've got the massive issue of AI again affecting pretty much all industries in some way but especially in the tech industry now I do want to do a whole video on this subject obviously it's a huge subject but just to summarize my thoughts for this video yeah I think AI is having an impact I mean I use it every single day to help me solve standard problems and I think it's making us faster and more efficient more effective as developers so for example let's say a company needed 50 developers at one point if through AI those developers are becoming more efficient then it's reasonable to assume that the company might only need 40 for example so in that sense I think it is kind of indirectly affecting the job market but really I don't think it's directly taking jobs away from developers because if you have used things like ChatGPT to help you with your development work, I think you'll quickly realize that it's not really there yet in terms of being able to do these things on its own. There still seems to me to be such a gap between what we ask it to do and what it gives us back a lot of the time. You could say it's right, maybe, I don't know. 25 to 50% of the time, certainly nowhere near 
100% of the time. And so can you imagine just leaving it to its own devices to do some work for you? It's just impossible right now. So I do still think that it's worth learning to become a developer, at least from the standpoint of AI. They're not taking away our jobs anytime soon, in my opinion. So I know I've talked about a lot of very different subjects in this video. They're definitely all related. And if you saw my video on age and, you know, talking about the question, am I too old to become a developer at certain ages? I think youth is always probably going to help you. Age can be a hindrance in some situations. And I think it's kind of similar here. And so the way to combat that and overcome it is to make yourself the best developer you can be so that age isn't even really a question in the equation and I think we can take a similar approach to all these issues that I've discussed today. I think if we use it as a catalyst and a springboard to really make ourselves the best developer we can be, there are still jobs out there, of course there are still jobs out there. The market's going through a bit of a fluctuation and there are more people pouring in but if you know that you can work harder and do better and be better than most of those other candidates then really it doesn't matter and you don't have to pay attention to all that stuff too much. As I often say on this channel I think a safer bet is aiming for smaller companies in your local area that are much more willing to take a chance on junior developers and train you up and bring you up and I think you shouldn't be going for those work from home remote roles from the start you should expect to be in an office with people and that's what's going to be best for you when you're first starting if you have a look in your local area see what jobs are available and tailor your skill set to that and you're willing to work in the office to start with and and like i say and you're willing to be the best developer that you can be put the work in and be a standout candidate I just don't think you're going to struggle. There are plenty of jobs out there for people who are willing to take that approach, in my opinion. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you've got something out of it and some encouragement. And on this one especially, please do let me know what you think in the comments below because these are just all things that I see from my perspective. And it's a really interesting topic to have a discussion on and get other people's input on. If you have enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. I've got much more content planned for this channel coming this year. And as I always say, if you've got any ideas for videos for me, then please do let me know. But thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon.